Hey there, nerds. Welcome to Body Count, where we obsessively track every dead body that films explicitly, implicitly, and aquatically plop like record-breaking sea basses from the greasy hands of disappointing, talentless nephews. All 3,634,399 deaths in Finding Nemo. Let's start with the first obvious 400 deaths. Yeah, Clownfish Daddy Marlin wakes up to exactly one wife corpse and 399 kid corpses. Yes, Marlin, I no, I see it. All dead by acute barracuding. Fun fact, barracudas often just kill for fun, meaning they'd almost never go for eggs because they don't scream in a satisfying way. If Coral had just swam to safety, everybody would have been fine. I mean, other than Marlin and Coral somehow having to provide for 400 children in this economy. There's over 400 eggs. But that Barracuda is karmically killed not long after the events of Finding Nemo, as evidenced by his stuffed and mounted carcass in Toy Story 4. Just like my nephew's carcass. Before the attack, Marlin and Coral celebrate their first sea anemone home. But the anemone, which looks like a pastel Rasta Barbie severed head, is not some pretty sea flower. It's actually a predatory polyp that uses venom and neurotoxins to kill and eat prey. While clownfish diet consists primarily of smaller invertebrates and algae, they've also been known to lure larger predators inside the anemone where their house poisons and eats them, leaving bits of flesh and viscera for the clownfish to feast on. That's why it being near the drop off was such a huge deal to Marlin and Coral Wayne Gacy. It makes it easier to dump fish skeletons and avoid the fish police. Anemones can live for a hundred years and need to eat roughly twice a week. Let's conservatively assume this anemone is a middle-aged 50 years old. That'd make this pink suburban dream house actually the house of 5,000 corpses. Remember when Marlin mentions other clownfish having their eyes on his murder mansion? Better believe they did. Well first, do fish in the world of Finding Nemo use money? If so, that means they practice capitalism, and therefore the body count should be in the hundreds of millions. <laughs> Let's assume they don't. But how did Marlin get this house over all the other clownfish who wanted it? Well, in the ocean, clownfish straight up fight to the death when two males compete for the same thing, like territory. But clownfish groups are usually led by alpha females, and it's much more common for their women to get their fins all bloody. So if we assume Marlin was talking about multiple fish, that suggests that Coral at least twice threw on some badass fishnet stockings and shanked an unsuspecting home buying rival in the neck with a rusty fish hook. You remember how we met? Well, I try not to. Hey, another fun fact. A sick hermit crab will die within hours without its shell. I know you can't really tell how healthy that crab is, but look at him. $20 says the inside of his shell is plastered with anime posters. Yeah. I'm just gonna assume the bullies never give the shell back and the crab, obviously named Sheldon, drops dead. This talking hemorrhoid is named Pearl, and like Batman, she's an orphan. Unlike Batman, she's a pink flapjack octopus. See, almost all octopuses are orphans because in almost all octopus mating, the male fertilizes the female's eggs directly or by throwing sperm packet balloons at her and essentially telling her to go screw herself, which she does later at her convenience. My name is Pussy Galore. I must be dreaming. The male octopus then dies in a matter of months while the female meets the great spaghetti monster in the sky shortly before her eggs hatch. Two dead parents equals two dead bodies. Internet sleuths with nothing better to do, and yes, I know that's ironic to say, have determined that Bruce the Shark's submarine base is most likely the real-life Gato-class submarine, the USS Flyer. It was sunk during World War II, killing 72 crew members. The movie seems to have the wrong location, but also the Flyer wasn't discovered until six years after this movie was released, so Pixar was probably just making an educated, horrifying guess, and dramatically bumping up our body count. Oh, well, I um, seem to have misplaced my uh, friend. Ha, it's funny because this used to be a sentient living thing with hopes and dreams. 
So Bruce hasn't eaten a fish in over three weeks, which good on you, bros. Fish back to concentrate. Uh, but how many fish did you eat three weeks ago, buddy? Sharks tend to eat between 0.5 and 3% of their body weight every feeding, and given that they tend to weigh 4,000 pounds, that's up to 120 pounds of fish. Of course, to be fair, fish in the ocean are big as hell, as in tuna are like 500 pounds. Also, great whites of his size and age realistically are targeting sea lions and other big stuff like that, so we'll assume that he killed just one big something. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt and assume that he was raised anti-pescatarian and just slipped for the first time ever. It has been three weeks since my last fish on my honor. Except wait, Bruce is a great white shark, and great white sharks usually only birth one baby shark, doot do, despite always being pregnant with multiple offspring, doot do. How does that work? Embryonic cannibalism. One of the most horrifying two-word combos since scrotum and drill. Google it. The strongest baby shark usually kills and eats their siblings right there in the womb, and litters typically consist of two to ten pups, so we're looking at up to nine more Bruce killings as evidenced by his being not dead at, and born. Or may I be chopped up and made into soup. Boy, I hope that little fish who got abducted and brought to the meeting by that one shark got far enough from the minefield to not get burned to death in the explosion, but probably not. As for everybody else in the nearby ocean, the sediment plumes from the explosion will spread and poison the water for miles. Specifically, how many bodies this will cause is hard to pinpoint. I figure on at least a uh, thousand. <sighs> But in 1986, 22 explosives were detonated off the shore of Texas, resulting in an apparent 51 sea turtle deaths. So let's just assume that all of Crush's extended family is now dead. Dude. So how many fish has Darla killed over the years? Well, we know for a fact that she's killed one. Rest in peace, Chuckles. But considering she's turning eight and still getting a fish for her birthday, my guess is her uncle just constantly replaces them for birthdays and Christmases. She'd likely need to be two years old to have the necessary coordination to really kill a fish. So let's give her two dead fish every year from age two to seven, minus Chuckles, of course. Wait, up, wait! <laughs> And since we're on the topic of lifetime kills, how many fish did those jellyfish venom zap to death? The shape-shifting school of moonfish warns Dory to avoid them, so the jelly killers must be a known local threat that everyone avoids, except for the hundred or so people killed every year by jellyfish. So let's just add another hundred human bodies to the count. How's it going, Bob? Bad, because Bob is now dead and eaten. Hey, does the whale know the krill it's consuming are sentient? Surely it definitely heard the krill scream right away when it tried to swallow them, and blue whales can eat up to four tons of krill per day. Considering a single krill weighs one gram, that means during this scene, you quite possibly witnessed the brutal death of up to 3,628,740 krill. And this movie is enjoyed by children. Hey, how are Gil and the rest of Nemo's pals from the dentist office tank supposed to get out of those bags? There's maybe enough water dissolved oxygen in those bags for seven to nine hours max, after which the fish inside will die. <coughs> The starfish might last long enough to watch each of its friends asphyxiate since it breathes through its entire body in a process called diffusion, but eventually it too will suffocate. Find a happy place! Find a happy place! Does the horror end there? Will the plastic bags either eventually catch on something or get pecked at by seagulls, releasing the fish corpses inside and polluting the ocean with plastic garbage that will keep on floating until it eventually chokes Crush and his turtle child to death, finishing the job the underwater mine started? Probably! The end! you final body count 3,634,399 for now if that wasn't sad enough please consider signing up for our patreon where we have a whole bunch of extra finding nemo bonus sadness that's only available to patrons